the time that I'm going to invest in my business, I need to be super focused and know exactly what to do. My assistant laughs all the time because I want everything to be as efficient as possible because every minute matters. What are you doing that's working so well that's allowing you to do more business than 99.8% of all humans? I think the easiest thing is to get out of your own way. When I was a single agent, I thought the most important thing to do was to go out and sell as many houses as possible. And then I had several girlfriends tell me I was a terrible boyfriend. I was uh, all I cared about is work. And I realized that that's not the business I wanted. And I wanted a family. I wanted kids. Tomorrow, I'm looking forward to a golf tournament with my four-year-old. That's right, golf tournament, my four-year-old. So I wanted the freedom to be able to do that. And that freedom comes with letting go. Letting go of that lead that comes in and teaching somebody how to work that or letting go from that position of you always have to be the one giving the answers, you always have to be the one mentoring. You have to step back and become more of a coach of the team rather than a single coach of every single person on the team. Of the, call it 420 units in the last 12 months, what percentage, if you had to guess, is coming from way of SOI? Oh, I think it's 82%. might be 81 by right now, but it is way up there. We track it every day. We do client appreciation parties. We spend our time nurturing our clients so that we can sell more real estate without having to do much work. I think that one thing you talk about is SOI and how important that is, but I would say look at our marketing spend. I spend $0 on billboards, on marketing, my face, my name, any of that stuff. We put all our money into the training of our agents, and then we put it into the clients that we that we work with. So, okay, talk to me about SOI then. Like, are, are you running a 36 touch program? Is there a quarterly phone call? Like what, if I'm sitting there and I'm saying, look, I, I'm in. I want 82% of my deals to come from an SOI. Walk me through sequentially a model such that I can start thinking about this. And I'm, I'm going to take notes as you go. So I think whenever you're developing a model or a system or a plan, you have to start off with the mindset. And our mindset is we want future business from them. Every single client that we close on, we want them to repeat business with us and we want them to refer business to us. And those two things are both focuses that we do. So number one is setting expectations. The more you set expectations during the transaction, you know, Mike Hicks at Idaho, sweetest man I know, taught us the promise script, which we then brought back to our team. We've been using it for five or six years. Our entire team is, is pushed around the Google reviews. We have 800 plus five-star Google reviews. So when you start creating a mindset around giving people the best service and then setting the expectations that if we deliver, would you mind referring me people that you know want to buy or sell real estate? You set that in, that tone in the entire company and in every transaction you do. So if step one is mindset, then yep. you, now you're telling me how you're, then step step two is having, is it is it knowing how I'm going to stay in touch or making a list of all the things? It starts with you have to stay in touch, period. And that's our biggest fear as an agent is what am I going to say when I call and say, hey, how are you? How's the kids? Okay, great. Well, three months later, how are you? How are the kids? It just doesn't work. So by having like, hey, Jason, listen, I'd love to see you and the family. We're having an ice cream social. We've got a live band, a bouncy house. We're doing it at an actual creamery. So there's going to be cows. We would love for you to come. How easy is it for me to make that? And how easy is it for you to feel like you're valued? Whether you can come or not, whether you have ballet that day, whether you're traveling, doesn't matter. You feel valued. So the number one thing that I would say in the model is you have to have a consistent time to connect and you have to be delivering value. And that value for us is inviting them to something that we think is going to be interesting and fun. Well, so how many of these events are you doing over the course of the year to have a reason to call folks in a TCPA friendly, compliant way, of course, and invite them to them? Yeah. So I think the most important thing to understand is that every client needs to hear from you one time a quarter by the telephone. So if you have four phone calls to make, then you need to have four client appreciation events. 
and it makes every one of those phone calls that much easier. And think about if you're one of my clients and you see me calling and you know every time I call, I'm inviting you to a winery event or a creamery event or blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, you're going to look down and go, oh, I wonder what he's got this week. I wonder what he's doing this year. And then you're going to answer. So once a quarter is the bare minimum that you need to physically be talking to somebody on the phone, not just, oh, I sent him an email or a text message. That comes differently. So on our team, not only do we have the one phone call a quarter, we also have one text message a quarter. And we also have one social media touch a quarter. So when you add that up, every one of our clients is hearing from us every single month. We're just varying the intensity level. A phone call is a lot more intense than a text message. And a text message is probably a little more intense than a social media. Hey, that's the cutest puppy I've ever seen. Hope you're doing well. I understand the phone call. I'm inviting them to an event. If I'm doing that four times a year, I'm well served to have four events. Give me just off the top of your head, what are some examples of events? All right. So uh, around Thanksgiving, we do a pumpkin patch. And now you got to choose the pumpkin patch correctly. So we have big pumpkin patch. They have hay rides. They have uh, animal petting. They have a corn maze uh, throughout. Like it, It's all those little things, a big bonfire. All those things make it an experience and an event. So we're not just saying, come pick up your free pumpkin. Talk to me about these texts. Give me an example of what a text might say. Really simple. Here's a, here's a really easy one that we use all the time. Hey, Jason, just in the neighborhood showing some new buyers around, drove past your house and just wanted to say, hope you're doing well. Now, very short, that's not intense at all. But what did I tell the client? I told the client, hey, still in real estate. Two, I care about you enough to call you. Three, I've got buyers in this area. So if you know anybody looking to buy, I'm a good resource. Or if you have a seller that you know is trying to sell, I've got buyers here. And five, I'm just a really nice guy. That's and that's so all we're trying to get across in that five seconds of time that you spend in their mind. We do a winery. It's called uh, Wine and Equines. So it's a winery that's attached to a big horse farm. So you have the horses walking through and the wine, and, and that's a lot of fun. Now, this social media thing, what what is that? You know, Steve DeLaviaga, who I know is a dear friend of yours, a dear friend of mine, he told me once that a like is a high five, but a comment on a post is like a hug, and we should be digitally hugging people. Do you subscribe to that idea? Uh, I go one step further. So I don't want a hug. I want an awkward five or six second hug. And this that. is how you do that. Not only do you comment, but you ask a question. Like you have a new puppy and I say, Jason, the new puppy is so cute. What kind is he or where did you get him? And then you're going to immediately like my comment, feel good. You get a little dopamine hit in your brain. And then you respond with, oh, we just picked him up from this amazing rescue. And we suggest anybody looking for a dog to go here. They're so great. And then I can say, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Hope everything's good with the family or whatever nonsense. I can just transition out. But now not only did I make a comment, so they got the dopamine hit and they uh, attributed it to me. But then I asked a question to go a little bit deeper and make them more emotionally connected to the conversation. I love the simplicity of it, by the way. Is there a sweet spot in the number of people that you think I should be running this model for? Yep. It's really simple. We call it our 555 program. So every single day, Monday through Friday, we call five people, we text five people, and we social media touch five people. So that ends up in the span of a quarter being 325 people. So if in your example, you had 10,000 people in your database. That's amazing. Congrats to you. My question would be, do they all, are they all past clients who have known you, use you, trust you? Number two, the next one I would do is, do they like you? I don't know about you guys, but I've had a few clients at the end of the transaction. I knew following up with them wasn't going to do much for them. And maybe I didn't like them. Maybe they didn't like me. It's fine. I'll take them out. So <laughs> you can now start deciding who are your top raving fans. You spend time with that group of 325. You won't have to look for business anywhere. And then you teach your team to do it. 
So then it's your 325 and theirs and theirs and theirs and theirs and theirs. And think about what that looks like in the end. I love that. By the way, if you are going to be using any sort of dialer and doing any sort of phone calling, we urge you to do it in a TCPA friendly, compliant way, paying attention to all state, local and federal laws and guidelines. On behalf of all the homeowners in the Maryland area that you've helped, thank you. But more than that, uh, you've done a ton for the industry. Like I said, I think that you're an amazing evangelist for all realtors and you're doing a lot of good. And I, for one, am grateful for your mentorship and the coaching that you've given me over the years. I got more. I know you loved it. Click right here.